top 10 best and the top 10 worst cities to invest in for short-term rentals. We'll see if Connecticut made the list of either of those. Uh, And then we'll chat about whether short-term rentals are a good investment here locally. There's always a lot of people that are interested in those. And then we've got some numbers on where uh, vacation home demand is heading right now. So top 10 uh, best cities to uh, these are basically when we say short term rental, you know, be thinking Airbnb, uh, Airbnb or uh, what's yeah, the other big name? T- there? Typically furnished the VBRO, v- the yeah, one. VBRO. Uh, you know, there are very few people now that are doing these short term rentals on their own website or something. Those, those are the two big platforms that people are uh, doing the short term rentals to, and to identify these short term rental markets of 2024. Clever real estate in collaboration with Rabu.com. Analyze 50 biggest metro areas, ranking them according to the following parameters. Uh, 4X, it would be median home sale price. Uh, 4X would be return on investment score. Then the 3X category would be occupancy rate, average annual revenue for property owners. Property value change in the last five years. Uh, 2X would be Google search volume for terms related to short-term rentals. And 1X would be the percentage of listings suitable for Airbnb. Uh, Zillow current property values in that lower category and then the number of total listings. Okay, so the top 10 short term rental markets for 2024 are uh, and this might be contradictory a uh, number two here on the list to your Uber drive last week that I heard all about Brian. Uh, but number one would be Tampa. Number two would be Orlando. Number three, Jacksonville, four, Boston, five, Miami. So you got four out of five top 10 short-term rental markets for 2024 being in florida boston sneaks in there at four uh then you go to buffalo number six i i I only have to imagine that the buffalo bills mafia is so strong (laughs) that they are they are just driving up demand for these short-term rentals and there's probably not a lot of josh allen effect yeah the josh (laughs) allen the, the bills mafia the the whole deal i mean buffalo on the list after you you know you go four sunshine state locations and then you've got Boston, which, you know, is, is obviously Niagara Falls. Is that is very attractive? Buffalo? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Buffalo no in, in there at number six. Columbus, Ohio at seven. Chicago at eight. Providence, Rhode Island at number nine. Uh, Kansas City, Missouri. Providence, Ro- Kansas That's City. That's shocking. Is to me. Providence is very shocking because I just drove through Providence recently. Uh, why the heck did I do that to myself? Uh, I forget why, <laughs> but. For some reason, I had to drive through it, and I was like, oh, my God, what a wasteland this place is. I've that- been on many vacations in New England, and never once have I said, to, hey, honey, let's go to Providence this well, you weekend. Got, you, got your, you got your different areas there. I love the certain area, area of Providence. I go to plays out there sometimes, and I'll hop around and go to the shopping district and some good restaurants. There are some good areas I like out there. But- really? Well, maybe you just know the city. I was going past the Providence Place Mall. <laughs> I don't which, know Providence. When, when we were young, the Providence Place Mall was built. It was like the thing, you know. That was the thing. Now I know I went to the Providence Place Mall maybe seven years ago, and I was walking through it, and there was so much stuff shut down. So many of the big names have left. But then just driving by it uh, recently, it looked it, it looked pretty pathetic to say the least. Yeah, I gotta agree with that. So, but anyways, Providence, congrats, uh, number nine on the short term rental mm-hmm. market. So Providence getting 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 in there with I guess all of my I'll probably get some uh, hate email on the Providence. Uh. Yeah, they they are in our listener range. Maybe we should go a little easy on the Providence folks. <laughs> they are, yeah. <laughs> Everyone with a soft spot in your heart. Oh, I, Providence. I got you, Providence. I do have an airport, but uh, technically not in Providence. All right, ten uh, worst short-term rental markets. Then we'll let you know if we think uh, Connecticut, which is not on either list. Uh, Connecticut is a good short-term rental market opportunity uh, and where those opportunities might be. So 10 worst uh, short-term rental markets, San Jose, Birmingham, San Jose, California, Birmingham, Alabama, or one and two, San Antonio, Texas. San Antonio, Texas is no surprise to me because there's so many of them. So supply is so high on short-term rentals. Houston plus San Antonio is really nothing to do. Uh, Houston, number four, Sacramento, number five, Raleigh, North Carolina, number six, Riverside, California, San Francisco, California, coming at seven and eight, Oklahoma City, 
nine, and then Pittsburgh ten. Hmm. Um, Pittsburgh a little surprising. That that always people always people very much highly recommend Pittsburgh to me. I get that a lot too. I was just yeah. in Pittsburgh last summer. I had fun. I liked it. Hmm. I'm not but surprised maybe, to see Riverside. I used to live there. I did not stay rough. at an Airbnb though. River, stay, River, stay Riverside friends. is rough. Now, I'll bring up uh, some other statistics that might be surprising to you guys. Okay, uh, on this, on these numbers here that that we're going over. So, what do you, when you look at the top ten, when it says best short term rental markets, what would strike you as a occupancy rate for these markets? Throw, throw some numbers out there. You see, the top five is you know the four Sunshine States, and then the. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you and then you've got Boston in there. What do you think for these owners, these investors of uh, of short term rental markets who buy a property and like I'm going to go make a ton of money on Airbnb? What do you think they uh, have for occupancy rates? So before I make the guess, I'll tell you I've done I've tried to estimate this a little bit. It's an interesting exercise. I own, I've never owned a short term rental. I do own a couple long-term rentals where people just are in an annual lease they're close to home easier to manage so they don't have to pay a management fee but every once in a while i flirt with the idea of getting a, a property in vermont and i was like oh maybe i could buy a second home in vermont and rent it out so what i typically do is i go on to the airbnb website and i look at it'll show you on the calendar what nights are available and what nights are booked already so i'll actually look at the calendar and maybe look at a couple months out and see how many nights a month they have booked versus bacon. And it's usually like eight to 10 nights a month or depending on what time of year it is. But that means, you know, 65% of the of the time, it looks like the place is empty. So I don't, I've never actually researched occupancy and rates. These are but, places you're yeah. looking in, you're looking in Connecticut. So you're, you're seeing in Connecticut. I live in Connecticut. Oh, no, this is in Vermont. So I look at oh, properties I'm sorry. in okay. Vermont. In Vermont. Uh, so, going with the idea of buying a second home that I would rent out up there. Okay. And, you know, so usually, you know, it's usually like eight days a month are booked unless it's like fourth, you know, it's a pop, really popular month. So, um, but that's Vermont. Vermont's not on the top 10 list. So I'm going to guess Orlando, you know, maybe they're at like 50 to 60% occupancy, meaning booked hmm. 60% of the time. That would be my guess. Right, so, so, so um, what's your guess there, Rob? I do the same thing. I, I play around with these sites as well. And I, I was thinking 80%. I mean, that would be Could ideal. Be. Yeah, that wouldn't surprise me. Uh, okay, so, Brian, you're you're on the money. Rob Rob is uh, is up. a lot higher on the high side. And maybe, uh, maybe Rob's just looking at the premier properties as opposed to <laughs> over, <laughs> as the overall. Yeah, but, I like so, to stay in luxury. <laughs> here, here we go. Tampa, number one. Um, best short-term rental market according to this cleaver analysis uh occupancy rate over the last 12 months in tampa is 45 percent of wow. airbnb occupancy wow. so so to be you know so it's no surprise you know vermont not being top 10 you're seeing you're looking at like okay 30 35 percent occupancy mm-hmm. the best of the best are 45 percent in tampa 46 percent in orlando 44 percent in jacksonville boston um, was 49% and it was the fourth best, you know, cause they, they, uh, have all these other measurements that I read off earlier that factor in. So, uh, 49% for Boston, Miami, 41%, Buffalo, 40%, Columbus, Ohio, 41%, Chicago, 43%, Providence, 45%, Kansas city, Kansas city, 44% of the top 50 metros that they took a look at only Denver even mm-hmm. cracked 50% and it's at 50% even for occupancy rate. So, with occupancy rates so low, the short-term rental market, does that investment make sense? And does it make sense here in Connecticut? 